How do you go from being a supreme athlete, six pack, bench pressing 500 pounds in your 20s, and you can't make it through your 40s? Marcellus Wiley of ESPN. I play for the Buffalo Bills, San Diego Chargers, Dallas Cowboys. And then I play for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Left defensive end until Bill Parcells moved me to the right defensive end and ruined my career. No, uh, so I played left defensive end. I started in front of the house, uh, street football, going from light post to light post. Once I was in the NFL, I was completely shocked of a many of things, um, starting off with the fact that now legends were my brethren and guys I'd seen on commercials were now my friends. And one time we were snowed in and I had to get a ride from one of my teammates, Taylor Washington, veteran. And I remember getting in this car and it was a mess. In the midst of cleaning off the seat, I see two of our game checks open right there on the seat. And I was like, Ted, you got some game checks here, you want them? He's like, oh no, Wiley, throw them in the glove compartment, I'll be fine. I look at them, and one of them was 500,000, and one of them was 400,000, uncashed. And I'm looking like, why don't you cash your checks? And he was like, oh, those aren't even game checks. Those were like my off-season bonuses. I was like, oh, hell no. And that moment helped me realize that this game could be great to me if I'm serious about it. The pressures kick in once you feel that you're not at 100%. So imagine you got a strained hamstring. Strained hamstring in NFL is like, all right, tape it up, shut up, and play. But you're like, I can't run as fast as I want to. I can't run as fast as I can. And my, my rookie year, my first injury was plantar fasciitis. Uh, I couldn't step on the ground without pain in my foot. And so I had to sleep with a boot. And I remember every night going to bed with this boot on my leg and taking all these pills to deal with the swelling. And I remember how that felt to me and the pain I felt and how bad this injury was in my mind, in my eyes. Like, I can't go out there and do what I want to do. I can't make an impression this way. But then on the on the flip side, the contrast was how no one gave a damn, how no one cared that I was limping, that my foot hurt, because they were sitting there as players saying, something hurts on me. And then they're sitting there as a coach or a trainer saying, tough it up. I was in my second year, Buffalo, and the first thing I noticed was like, we all had white pants, and I used to see little blood stains on everybody's butt. Finally, I asked the guy, I said, what's torn off? What? And they're like, no, man, it just makes you feel good. Like, you know, you, you feel like no matter what they do to you, you'll be fine. So I started taking Toradol, and I was like, oh, it actually does help, because you always feel some form of pain in the NFL. My first year in San Diego, I broke my foot. And that entire season, I didn't practice one time. I break my foot, I have a surgery, it's supposed to take eight weeks to recover, I came back in two weeks, and on those game days, I would wake up in the morning, I'm limping, barely could walk, barely could walk, get to the locker room, get the shot in the foot, get the shot in the butt, Far side. That is his fourth sack of the year. To the tune of 13 sacks in 14 games with one foot. That's how it happens. That's the NFL. And the way the NFL works, and I don't think a lot of fans understand this, the doctor prescribes you something and you take it and you're like, that was fine for me. But did he cross reference? Did he cross check your combine issues with these issues? Case in point, I had asthma my entire life. My doctor said I couldn't even play football when I was seven at first because I had to pass all these rigorous tests because of my asthma. Every NFL team I played for knew that. They also knew that a guy who had asthma shouldn't be taking Toradol. Did I know that? Hell no. How would I know that? Because I trust in someone who does know that. No one's in the NFL saving us from ourselves. They know we want to play. They know our spirits. That's the way it should be. But if your job is to protect 
If your job is to make sure this person is going to survive this experience and thrive in his next experience, well then do your damn job. What happened to me really changed my course. Uh, one day after working out at a boxing gym, I was driving to work and my leg locks up. Then total body cramps. I'm stuck halfway out the car, halfway in the car, grab my phone, call my producer, say, I need you guys to come downstairs. I can't move. And Max Kellerman, my co-host, is like, let me call our doctor uh, that we have on the show and just describe your symptoms. He says immediately, I can hear him, take him to the emergency room right now. Turns out I had renal failure, kidney shutdown. And then I heard Jeremy Newberry talk. You say you were given drugs, primarily something called Toradol, every single game you played of your entire career? I would say at least uh, 10 out of the 11 years I was taking Toradol. In 2003, 2004, something like that, I started showing signs of kidney damage in my blood test and my urine test. These same doctors were looking at those same tests every year for my physical and giving me a clean bill of health. Now you're good to go, you're fine. Look, I'm a grown man. I took this medicine, I get it. But tell me the effects. I go to the pharmacy right now in the real world, you get pamphlets, you know, you get a bag of information. They sit down with you and tell you, look, you can take this, but at the same time, be careful of this. Here are the side effects, highlight it. They don't just hand you an envelope without your name on it, with no pamphlets, information, and just say, take it. I wonder why. Some of the nation's toughest athletes, pro football players now retired, are suing the NFL today. Charging the league hid injuries from players behind a mask of pain pills. I was only made aware of it just briefly, but uh, I don't believe any of our attorneys have had an opportunity to look at it. And as you know, I've been in meetings all day. Look, the NFL has a concussion lawsuit. I'm not joining that lawsuit. That wasn't my experience. I didn't have issues with concussions in the NFL. So I'm not a money grabber. And as a matter of fact, one of the reasons I joined a lawsuit is because the first thing I heard in response was, oh, look at all these broke, retired, disgruntled players needing some money. I got two jobs at ESPN in my backyard in LA. I make NFL money right now talking. So if you're going to come out and say that about us, say it about me. But you can't. I want to be that voice for those guys to let them know, uh-uh, this is not about principle. With an AL, it's about principle with an LE. Not everyone's blessed to have the real world smack them right in the face. And not everyone is unfortunate as I am to have their kidneys shut down. And I'm not scared of telling my story to anybody. My grandmother raised me to say, say what you say and mean what you say. And I'm not trying to pull the NFL down. They have the capability to fix this. Let's fix it together.